today I'm going to talk to you about to forgive. It's it's a very hard thing to do to forgive when when people have hurt you so very much. But most of the time, when someone have hurt you and give you pain and do bad things against you, is it that those people, they have move on. They don't remember that they have done that to you. And they they can also not feel like they have hurt you. Uh, that's their vision, their thinking of what they have done to you, that it have, it was nothing for them. They say that that uh, uh, that was not so much I did for that to that person, and they move on, but they they don't know how much they have hurt you, and uh, it's very hard to to forgive when in the most uh, bad situation like someone have killed your your child some something like that uh, and um, how to forgive that murderer the killer it's forgiveness forgive is not about that other person it's about you that you you can walk around uh, for years for months for your whole life and think about what they have done to you and uh, um, this is my belief I believe that those uh, bitterness and anger we keep uh, we, we uh, of course we we keep them in <coughs> uh, in the in the brain but we don't have it in front of the brain the that we carry them with us every day and remember it but they are always there they w- will never go away but we can place them so far uh, far behind far, far away from daily life thinking so it doesn't hurt us but if we go and uh, think about it most every day uh, maybe every day I believe that that it causes illness inside you and I'm not talking about mental illness because that's that's easy to say, but it's uh, also that it can cause damage in your body, in like uh, you get cancer of it or, or bleeding stomach and stroke and those things. Uh, and this person that have hurt you, he or she is moving on and not thinking about it. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's you that have to work on it. Uh, to in, Not that we don't need to love that person that have hurt us, but we can say... I have found peace in in this between us. Um, I I am not going to have you as my closest friend or my closest relative, my closest family member. But I can face you 
and I can say hello to you, and but I never w will be close to you anymore. But uh, that is that's uh, how I find it out how to move on as a victim and and have that uh, victory against the devil that have is the, the devil behind everything that is negative in your life and um, and he should not have this victory you have to work on forgiveness forgiveness uh, that means that uh, in uh, in your way uh, to work so something else occupied your mind uh, and not uh, this event it's that was uh, something uh, that you have to learn from something that should make you stronger that you can face it as that was one a moment one time in my life but it is not my whole life it doesn't should kill me and I mean uh, not kill uh, so you go, go dead but it can kill you so you stop l loving stop to open up to other people to to be close to people that you you need to take it you can't go and take it that from that person that have hurt you because uh, then you can get even worse back to you if you you should not the best to deal with the devil the best way to deal with people that have hurt you is to keep silence to not talk to them you can say hello to them but you don't talk to them and um and uh, you only talk as uh, things that doesn't harm anything. It's only like air you talk to people that you don't know. Uh, you can talk to that person in that way. But the silence make the devil be more angry. It's not about weapon. It's about or uh, revenge I have learned that the best way to to uh, stop the devil in your life in my life is to to keep quiet because uh, the devil uh, get uh, the energy from how you act it's and the devil work in a short time is fast, so it doesn't take a long time to to make the devil first he go or she go very very angry, very very angry, but then after that top of anger because you are silence then it's going flat out the devil disappear disappear from you if you can keep your your peace and move on and uh, this person that have hurt you he or she can see that in your life that it yeah, even if you feel hurt that uh, this other person think that you have moved on and uh, uh, ignore 
what they have done. And uh, uh, I, I have uh, practices this sometimes when uh, I am an official person as a as a pastor and uh, working for God, and uh, so I get very much anger and and the devil coming into my life and try to hurt me and uh, I, I first I was like uh, every person most every person that I try to fight back and and then um, God uh, teach me that fight ba- back it is is not the good things to do it's better to hold your peace and uh, and uh, put your focus on something else and uh, i have learned from because i have had to deal with the devil my whole life really uh, meet him face to face and um, I have learned to very fast forget uh, the those events those times when I have to deal with he or she and um, and that have helped very much uh, but but I still was was fighting against evil things that I I find out later on because God told me to hold my peace and uh, not um, uh, be like the world because we are better than the world so we should not not uh, copy the world we should not copy the world we should hold peace like um, like uh, we are in the spirit world and not in this world and uh, and uh, you will see it if you try to hold your peace and only walk away if someone uh, threatened you and and try to make you upset you hold your peace and walk away from it and you will see what's happened first it's gonna be like uh, pouring gas on a fire it's gonna be worse but uh, after only one maybe some hours maybe one day or or week um, then it's over it's because uh, this uh, person that is so evil it have no time to wait on your reaction this person is going to another area or another person to put up a fight again because that's what he or she get the energy from to make a chaos make disturbing things do all this negative that's their life that's what they live for to make it and uh, and I have it was very very hard for me that uh, to forgive I had very hard I have to talk to God about it when I when I was God wanted me to go to to Utah to Salt Lake City to to talk to those priests uh, that is for the the Mormon church and uh, so I was but uh, 
uh, as I don't have any family or relatives or friends, I ask the Mormon church if they have someone that could take care of my home and my cats. Um, and they gave me one person. And uh, uh, I was lucky that I took with me uh, three computers or my my phone and and my laptop and my tablet and um, t- and then when because when I come back home this uh, person have opened up all my computers I had I I I collect computers uh, since the beginning when we got pieces and um, and she have taken all the hard drives out from all the computers and uh, I had some books I have written and a picture of my my kids and in my whole life's picture I had in those hard drives and and they have uh, and she have destroyed all the computers, those old computers from from the eighties, and, and nothing was going to could be okay again. But the the most worse was that she had stolen my my ring, gold ring I have got from. My son's father, when in in engaged ring, and uh, it doesn't matter what value it was, it was much money, but that was my engaged ring, my engaged ring, ring. and um, I should give it to my son later on, uh, to my grand children to to have and uh, my son's father died in 2003 so that was a kind of emotional thing she took and stole it and I never get it back and um, she tried to make friend with me and wanted to stay friend she don't understood what she did she thought that it was nothing that I, I took everything from you of, of value in your in my life I had no nothing left when I come home of value everything was gone and uh, it uh, I was very sad and angry of course but uh, I have to look at it and uh, and I was thinking and I saw that she was not she lied to to her bishop and say that that I was a thief she turned around it and because she stole money from me and uh, she wrote me that there was no food for the cats and I sent her money when I was in Salt Lake City and um, and I had lots, it was lots of food but I, I sent her anyway the money and uh, then uh, when I come back, she, she was, uh, she and her husband traveled to England over Christmas and New Year. And uh, I was thinking they are traveling for my money. That that's me paying their traveling to England, and I sit here. Alone in the Christmas time and New Year Eve and, and have nothing 
left in my home more than more than my cats and I was thinking that they could have stolen she could have stolen my cats so that was the first step I thank God that she never stole my cats because they were they are uh, ragdoll breed so they are very expensive but she don't, didn't understood the value of the cats so she didn't steal it because she had just ordinary cats that you can get get for free so uh, because she's mentally sick and I didn't know that I didn't knew that uh, in that time when she was house sitting for me, and she got money for house sitting also. And uh, when they were in England, they, her, she and her husband wanted me to be, uh, house sitting their home for because they have three cats, so I did it, and. Uh, when I come, when they come back, and I, I t- told the bishop that uh, they have stolen from me, and uh, when they come back, they come to my home and uh, threw rocks on my window, and uh, I take a picture of it and send it to the bishop, uh, so he saw that. But she blame it on her husband. She blame the whole time on her husband what she's doing. I know that, and uh, and it doesn't help because they say it. I have stolen from them when I was house sitting. I didn't knew. I am not in the evil world, so I don't think like them. So, so I should not have house sitting in their home. So now they say I was stolen. So that's like we were even. But I had not stolen. I, I stole in that way that I took back one computer that had... One of my computer in the home, they have taken it from from me. So I uh, carry it home. Uh, that's the only thing I did, and uh, and it uh, the people believed her because she is very manipulative person and I am honest person I can't do that such things so that's how I must deal with this situation so um, uh, friends in the church they told me to to ask go, uh, ask God how to do it and people say that, oh, you can be friends with her. She is very kindly and she wants to to be friend with you. Why can't you be friend? And they thought I was, uh, that I lie about that she stole everything of value in my home. They didn't believe it. So why should I go and be anger and bitter? Over what she have done, because she have move, move on, and uh, and uh, I call the police, and the police say that you can't, we can't do anything because you invite her to your home, and uh, and I, it was sad because when they come and threw rocks on my windows. Just after they have left, she and her husband left, there come a police. Uh, but he he was on his way to my home to buy a, a kitten from me. But if I have come and 
five minutes uh, earlier than he had seen them throwing rocks on my windows. But that's how it is. The devil protect his own kids. So he come late. Later. So uh, I have to ask God what to do. Because I was very sad and angry. And uh, God said that I should hold the peace. I should stay focused. On other things in life than what they have done to me. That's the past. And learn from it the past. That never do it again. Let people that you don't know coming into your home. And uh, I, I trust her because she was a member of the Mormon church. And so I learned that you can't even rely and trust a person that is a member of a church. That's what God wanted me to learn. And uh, the more and more and more I have I going away from religion. I am going away from the church. I am free. Uh, I don't need to be in a church. I am a free person. And uh, the only I trust is God. God Almighty, the Father of Jesus. The, the, what the Muslims say, Allah. Uh, that's the same. God and Allah is the same. It's, Allah is uh, Arabic for God so that's same and um, it's only about interpretation in interpretation what um, the translation of uh, those holy books how people act on it and think of, of it and uh, it have been in all generation uh, devils that have coming into the church and try to change uh, not only the Bible with all these new uh, versions there is like uh, taking away the big uh, letters of Lord there is one Lord and then there is another Lord in in the Bible but the new version from they, from the 80s and to do, until today, they have taken away those big letters for God Almighty. And all lords is with the small letters. And uh, so uh, people can't see when God is talking, real God is talking, or when Jesus is talking. The devil want to confuse people, and it's have been in generations, <laughs> maybe uh, already from the start, after Jesus was away, uh, it changed, and and uh, in all other gen- rel- religions, it changed. It changed the whole time. And uh, so the only one to trust is God, the God, cre- the Creator, and uh, asking Him what to do in your life. And uh, it's on. It's um, only to try to to see it as your past history evil things that happen to you and uh, move on and um, and know uh, the whole time I think that is that the devil who 
who send people to do things against you. It's uh, sometimes I think that that those people that have done evil things to you, they are also like a victim because the the devil have taken their minds. They he have coming into their bodies because uh, I don't believe that that any any person is born evil it's coming in mostly when they are a child or uh, one sensitive age is in, when they are in their teens that's where the devil take take people and uh, so they are like a victim if you can see it like that that is not that person in him or herself that have been evil this is a person that have been been taken of the devil so you should um, pray to god every evening and ask him to to help you hold your peace and um, and uh, try to focus on happy things things that make you happy and uh, and maybe go away somewhere else uh, travel away and um, and uh, um, because you have to think this that you will only hurt yourself to go angry it's a uh, I, I would tell you this is not a, a, a an advice for from me to do but uh, I, w- I want to tell you what uh, I live with the uh, Muslims people in the uh, United States when I was homeless and and the man in the family he told me once about uh, to not have any forgiveness the opposite and he said that um, in the in the islamic world in the muslims world is that the weakest man is the man that going to that person that have hurt you and talk to that person and uh, that you are hurted and uh, maybe get some something uh, money for what you have done or something get something back or like that Uh, that's the weakest to go and talk and the the second, second um, strongest or the weakest, uh, what, how you see it, the, is the one that go to the court, and uh, and the judge take care of it. But the strongest, the Muslim man say, the strongest is the one that kill, the one that is. And uh, that they have hurt you. So that's it's, it's uh, the opposite you should do, because that's not right to kill a person. Then uh, you are against God, because God is telling us to not kill. So that's 
that's uh, that's the devil talking like that to kill someone. We should not kill. And uh, about the weapon, I tell you that the best weapon you can have is in your brain. It's your brain. I have been in many, many dangerous situations with other people that people that have tried to kill me have come in with a weapon against me and uh, people that have tried to rape me and kill me and doing these things face to face to me and um, I have always could talk Talk me out from the situation. Always talk again. Talk uh, so they calm down and let me go or or uh, take a step uh, more far from them. Uh, talking and take one step back, some like that, and uh, then could go out from it. And. Um, because a weapon, if you hold a weapon, uh, a pistol, a knife against a person, don't come close to me if you want to defend. I don't talk about to be that threat. Uh, it's about defend you. And um, if you take up a knife or a uh, a gun, some weapon, and say, don't come close to me, I will kill you and defend you. That's very dangerous for, because that person can suddenly take the weapon from you and turn around the weapon and kill you. That's very bad to have a weapon. The best weapon is is the brain and to be to have God with you to be one with God and uh, doing right in your life and then could God give you words to tell that person that that threaten you God will give you so you can protect yourself with your brain and I am against weapon. It's a not good idea to have. But many, many have been talked into the, it as a child and think that this is the right thing to do, to have weapon. I had weapon. I had weapon when I was in Texas, but... Then I was not with God. I didn't know God. I have a, a gun under my mattress and in my bed in, when I lived in Texas when I was married in, in Texas, Lake Jackson in Brasulia County close to Houston. Uh, we have four weapons in our home. But that was before I knew God. And today I don't do it. I don't even vote. Because it's. Uh, we, I know that we live in the last days. So why should I go against God? Because it, the time is already made. Uh, the, the time we live in the last generation. We are in the last days, so much evil is going to come. And uh, if we like uh, go voting for me is to work against God. So I don't. I have not voted since I since I come to know God. So thank you for listening and God bless you and I hope I teach you something
that you bring with you something. Thank you.